Well, in that case, um, let's begin. Um, so the first thing we had on the agenda was the, um, the end user survey, um, which we have now converted into a survey monkey um, survey, which uh, we emailed out yesterday. Um, there were a couple of bits of feedback which um, have now been incorporated in there. Um, and if uh, there are no other sort of significant objections, we're planning to send the survey and the white paper to the end user forum this week. Um, and Cheryl will be, will be, um, will be uh, helping us with that and, and putting like a covering notes with it. Um, and I'm suggesting that we put an end date of the 10th of May um, for uh, responses to the survey so that we can collect the information and have something to discuss for KubeCon if possible. Does that sound okay with everyone? Yep, sounds good to me. Excellent. All right. Um, on that on that note, we we also got a slot with the end user forum. Um, unfortunately, the the um, the first first uh, slot that was available was the 9th of June. Um, there was an earlier slot in May, but it conflicted with the coupon Shanghai. Um, so uh, we moved that to the, I believe, the 9th of June now. Sorry, the 9th of July, sorry. Um, yeah, KubeCon Shanghai is in June. Um, so I assume that's, you... That's yeah. right, sorry. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was, the first slot was the 25th of June and it conflicted with, with the Shanghai event. So um, we'll get the 9th of July instead. Um, the next item on the agenda that we had was um, to discuss feedback from the um, the Open ABS discussion um, and some of the points that uh, Saad had raised in a number of emails to the uh, to this and the talk mailing list. I don't know, Saad, if you want to maybe quickly summarize some of those discussions. Yeah. So I don't think I have any uh, more outstanding concerns. I think I was mostly just confused about the process and uh, why we were doing this. Um, so to summarize, I think one was around, uh, I, I think it all just spurred from, I saw the presentation, I saw the discussions going on. Uh, we're going to be inducting EBS, open EBS into the CNCF. And uh, my first question was why? There are lots and lots of file and block um, storage systems out there. Why are we picking this one? What what is special about it? What is what is the reason behind doing this? Um, so then that kind of led to another question, which is what is the process of induction? Uh, and actually, it led to a third question, which is what is the purpose of this group, especially now that it's turning into a special interest group? Um, so I think the, the answers that I got, I, I am uh, mostly okay with. It sounds like there are different levels of uh, incubation within the CNCF. Uh, the bottommost level is called Sandbox. Um, and as I understand it, the steering committee for the CNCF wants the Sandbox to be as low a bar as possible to help incubate new types of projects that need help, that need uh, a community to, to kind of foster uh, their their development in uh, and the entire purpose of this sandbox is not to you know be very uh, to, to have a very high bar try to be very selective in terms of who gets in or who doesn't uh, and the other important thing to note is that the sandbox is explicitly not endorsed by the CNCF so that kind of changes things the induction of open EBS into the sandbox isn't really an endorsement by the CNCF. So the question of why are we picking this project, it, it is a little bit less relevant. Uh, yeah. In that. 
Yeah. Just to just to add a little bit to that, um, you know, there was there was a lot of vociferous debate around what uh, the the criteria are for for um, you know the different levels um, within the CNCF projects and uh, sandbox included um, around around last year um, and one of the one of the you know the major points was that the sandbox was about you know projects attempting to build the community um, as opposed to the CNCF endorsing them as you mentioned um, okay. and there was there was a little bit of um, sort of sort of, uh, I guess, uh, teething issues um, around a couple of the first sandbox projects that were that were um, included uh, because the CNCF did, did, did end up actually doing some press releases and things like that. But, but I think, um, I think Dan Kahn sort of took that feedback on board and, and now it's, it's, it's fairly clear that, you know, the CNCF isn't actually endorsing the sandbox projects per se and, it's, and they're not receiving, um, you know, publicity or marketing benefit. It's, it's more around building the community and, and kind of giving the, the, the project a foundation to, to, to grow um, where it can potentially then move up to the next tier. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Um, I, I fundamentally still think that's a a little bit of a strange direction to go in because as soon as you have uh, you know any kind of benefit that's being um, given by the CNCF to a uh, project to a certain extent that is an endorsement and you know that is and we should have uh, I think a higher bar to provide that kind of endorsement but I, I think the, it's a fine line. Uh, so I can I can completely buy the argument that well, the the benefits that are being uh, given here do not justify a uh, you know a very uh, a high scrutiny for the projects that'll get in. That's not the purpose of this sandbox. Um, so I think that that makes sense to me. Well, I would just like to say I agree with you that there is an implication, um, uh maybe not of endorsement, but certainly of uh, providing aid and, and taking under their wing uh, a project. Um, and, and, you know, we need to, to be aware of that. And although the, uh, you know, having a low bar is good, there, there still needs to be some kind of bar and, and we probably should still continue to have some discussion on what, where does that, where is the level of that bar, right? And yep. Uh, and I agree also with the, the validity of the first question, which is why this project, right? Have, is there a need ahead of time that's been identified, you know, and, and have we uh, sifted through uh, other projects that might also support this need? You know, is that the process? Uh, and I was unclear too, reading through uh, some of the comments in there. So uh, yeah, I can respond. I can respond to that set of questions which which I, I wanted to do anyway because i think there is some confusion um which i wanted to make clear so i, I was pretty actively it's quinton speaking by the way uh, formally on the toc um and i was pretty actively involved in in defining these tiers and, and having this conversation in the toc um i think this notion that we need to kind of compare all of the alternatives and pick the best one uh is 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 not right. Um, so there is no such requirement and there is actually a counter requirement in the TOC that we do not pick winners. Um, that, that actually any project can come to us, we have a set of criteria that they need to fulfill and if they fulfill those criteria, then they get to live in the CNCF. Um, and the criteria are actually fairly simple. For Sandbox, they're like, essentially, are you, you know, interesting to the CNCF? In the future at some point maybe you don't have to have any code you don't have to have anything you just have to have a plan to uh, build stuff um, that we think is interesting and and sort of cloud native ish uh, and that's by design very low barrier to entry etc um, incubation says that you have uh, actual momentum you have an actual thing and it's actually used in production by some number of uh, companies and graduation, you know, just 
raises that bar. You have multiple contributing companies, you have a larger number of production use cases, etc. Uh, and nowhere in there does it say that you're the best in your category uh, or that you're better than somebody else or, or anything like that. So I wanted to just make that very clear. The fact that Open EBS is in the CNCF, I mean, it happens to be in the sandbox, so, so it's kind of even less relevant, but even if it were in incubation or graduation, does not say that it is the best you know, distributed block store out there. It just says that it is a distributed block store, it is used in production, it does have you know, various characteristics with regards to contributor communities, um, and it, the owners of the IP decided to donate it to the CNCF, that's what it says. Does that make sense? That that's a lot more clear, um, and and I appreciate you sharing that because that does clear things up. Um, the the only hesitation that I would would still be left is making sure, or you know, is there is there a way that that we avoid nepotism in the process of bringing projects into CNCF so that it's not just a uh, cozy little uh makes makes perfect sense yeah. community, right and and that's why all of the evaluations are done in public uh, and to be clear not all of these are like selected by the cncf so open ebs actually came to the cncf and said we want to donate our project uh we did not approach them um and and our job as a cncf in that case is to say do you fulfill the criteria that we have specified for sandbox or incubation or graduation um, and any project can come to the CNCF and say, we would like to be donate our software to the CNCF and accrue the, the benefits that come with that. Uh, and if we decide not to do that, then uh, there's usually a, some kind of public uh, evaluation whereby it either gets voted on um, by the TOC or they fail to find sponsors in the TOC to sponsor them. Um, and usually there's some reason behind that given. And if, if not, you can ask the TOC, why did nobody sponsor this project? Uh, that would be a perfectly reasonable question. It can be asked in public and um, hopefully somebody will give you an answer. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that clears a lot of things up for me. I, I was confused going through the thread and, and I think you straight me out. I appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, I mean, what it does highlight, sorry, Xing, let me just one, make one last uh, comment. So, so what it does highlight, though, is that, you know, the logical end point of that is we're going to have many, uh, you know, at least several of, of you know, similar or, uh, I hesitate to use the word, but competitive projects in the CNCF. And we already have that in, you know, various spaces. Uh, service measures are, are one example where we have several. Um, and it is, you know, incumbent on the CNCF to, to make it clear, you know, what, what the similarities and differences are and to enable users to be able to choose between them. Um, and so, so we, yeah, we, we do need to take that fairly seriously. Whereas if we only decided we had one block store, then, you know, that's the block store that, that the CNCF proposes because it's the only one we have, which is not the case. Sorry, Shin, carry on. Oh, I, I just have one question. Uh, uh, do you have an example of a project that wants to join Sandbox but got rejected for some reason? Uh, yes, I believe there are some. Um, some of them, for example, I mean, if you look at the, the CNCF website has a very clear definition of what cloud native means. Um, and we've kind of fundamentally believe that cloud native architecture is, you know, compatible with the CNCF's mission. And if you come to the CNCF with a project that is fundamentally not of that nature, uh, it will be rejected on that basis. <laughs> um, I mean, to use a sort of corny example, if your, if your software only deploys on a mainframe, uh, single point of frame failure mainframe, somebody will say that is not a cloud native, you know, approach and therefore does not belong in the CNCF. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I think I think the challenge is that 
we need to get better around educating the the CNCF members on uh, landscape and options and that sort of thing, right? So, so there's we 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 kind of are going to be in, in, in a bit of a scenario as the CNCF grows, where in the early days there might only be one or you know there might only be one or two projects in a particular category, um, just because of timing or because of you know it's just early days. Um, in which case, you know, you're, you're potentially uh, promoting one over another. Um, and on the other hand, you might end up in a position somewhere down the line, kind of like what happened with the Apache Foundation today, where there are so many projects and so many things to choose from um, that that people will will need just better guidance as to as to what's on the landscape and, and what things are are used for what purposes. Um, so, so I think that's that's something we, we, we need to be aware of. I'm, I'm not sure there's sort of any obvious solution other than um, increasing awareness of, of, of different options and landscape. Yeah, I agree. Um, we're, we're 20 minutes in now. Um, we got a few other things. That sort of adequately addressed people's questions there. I think that was a useful conversation and thanks for bringing it up, Saad, because I don't, just to be clear, your, your confusion around this is not unique. Uh, the similar question comes up, you know, fairly often. And, uh, and I think it's, you know, the CNCF has actually failed in some respects by not making it clearer. Um, and, and that's a well understood problem and, and one that people are looking to solve. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. It does uh, uh, explain things a lot and, and what's going on and why things are happening. I think fundamentally, I still disagree philosophically with that direction. Uh, I think we should be, the CNCF should cultivate a ecosystem of projects that are more complementary to each other and be more selective. But I can also understand the draw of making the ecosystem more open and actually just say, hey, there's all of these options and we'll help you figure out which one's best. So uh, thank you for taking the time to clarify that. Sure. I can respond very briefly to that because that, that's a reasonable point of view you just pointed out. Um, the, the, the counter argument is that uh, it's not usually very successful to try and pick winners. It's much better for the winners to emerge from the ecosystem by virtue of, you know, ending up with more strong contributions and and lots of use. Uh, yep. If you try and you know make those determinations ahead of time and say, you know this this particular project is going to be the most successful, you know box store or service mesh or whatever category you like. Uh, statistically, most people are wrong, <laughs> so we kind of avoid making that mistake and we just say there are a bunch of them and over time. Um, the community will decide which ones to use and which ones to contribute to, and those will become the strongest. And we, we don't even try to predict what that will be. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, but what I, if, if I were to make the decisions here, what I would do is say that for, in order to get into the CNCF, you either have to have just, you know, pure adoption where you're the clear winner in this space. So that makes you, uh, that, that, that is the criteria for you to get in or, there is a strategic uh, kind of hole, a gap, where it's important for the CNCF to have a project in a space, but none exists, or there's uh, one that's kind of fledgling, provide support for that. Uh, but it does leave a, a gap, um, like you mentioned, for projects that are brand new, they're not clearly the winner, there's competition in that space, where do they go? Uh, I, personally, I don't think they should go into the CNCF. If there's something under the Linux Foundation or another kind of uh, some sort of, like if we could shift the sandbox somewhere else, remove the CNCF branding from it, let that be kind of an incubation center, and then let CNCF be the, the, the kind of cultivated uh, catalog of the, the, the products that complement each other within the CNCF ecosystem. I think that would be a best of both worlds approach. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe we should uh, pick
pick that up as a conversation at a KubeCon or sure. something sometime. Yeah, it definitely. sounds like a longer conversation. I, I, I certainly see your point. Um, and I think there, I mean, it's not clear to me that that, that would be strictly better. What, what you proposed would be strictly better than what we have. Um, I do think that we, we do need to be very clear about the branding. And, and that, that was a mistake that the CNCF made in not drawing a clear enough distinction between sandbox and the other levels. Um, so that it became very blurry whether this thing was like this super successful, well-adopted, well-supported project, or it was somebody's idea that, that got into the sandbox. And that, that messaging has been made a lot clearer since then. But, but you know, some of the damage was already done. Yeah, right. and these conversations help, so thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I, I don't want to sort of extend this conversation too much, because as you said, we've already spent some time on this, but... I do really like um, Sad's idea about uh, products that complement each other. Um, and somehow, I think maybe that might be worth a discussion either, you know, in some other meeting or, or perhaps in, in, in a coupon event where, where it would actually be useful to talk about how products make the, the sort of the end-to-end -end stack of the cloud native ecosystem better. Like, you know, for example, if, if products, you know, make Kubernetes better or they make logging for Kubernetes better or they make service meshes or security or whatever better, that's probably more valuable and more CNCF friendly than say, I don't know, something that, that, that makes uh, some sort of proprietary orchestrator better, for example. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think there is value in that because, because at the end of the day, the CNCF is here to make the adoption of cloud native technologies more successful and more, um, and more pervasive. And therefore, there is value in making sure that there is some sort of sense to the end-to-end -end stack. So, products working together and products complementing each other should be a goal that we, you know, attempt to move the needle on at, through, through some process here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And I, I think a lot of that happens naturally. Um, but yeah, more discussion for sure. We can, we can take, take it up elsewhere. Cool. Okay. Um, the next thing we had on the agenda, which is probably um, more significant for, for the working group today, is the, um, the fact that the working group is transitioning to um, a CNCF uh, SIG. The, the, um, the proposal for CNCF SIG was, was, was voted on and approved um, a number of weeks ago now. Um, and Quentin has drawn up a draft charter, which I've put into the uh, into the agenda for the for today's meeting. Um, Quentin, do you want to quickly just run through this? Uh, yes, I, I can do that if, if people think that would be useful. Um, perhaps I should present. Uh, there you go. Can everyone see the document? Yep. Yes. Okay, um, this does not represent months of work by any stretch of the imagination, but rather a couple of hours. Um, I tried to keep it as simple and stripped down as possible. Uh, otherwise, these things can become pretty unwieldy and philosophical and whatever. Um, what I tried to spell out is what we consider to be in scope and out of scope uh, as, as perhaps the starting point. Um, and then, uh, turn that into a, you know, short as possible mission statement, um, and then just be clear with how we overlap with interface with uh, and otherwise interact with s related groups, um, and then the basic operating model, which is actually covered in the SIGS proposal. So, so all I really wanted to call out was the stuff specific to our SIG. But I think in, on principle, we, we just follow the standard SIG operating guidelines and uh, pick a few people and uh, that's about it. Um, 
and yeah, we can go into that later. So maybe talking about scope would be useful. Um, so we consider to be in scope any storage systems and approaches suitable for and commonly used in modern cloud native environments. Uh, there's a link there to what a cloud native environment is as defined by the CNCF. Uh, we can jump there if you like, but it's, it's fairly self-evident. And especially where these differ significantly from storage systems and approaches previously commonly used in traditional enterprise data center environments. Um, and these areas are not already adequately covered by other groups with the CN within the CNCF. Um, and there's detail below. So that was kind of what we consider in scope. And we strive to understand the fundamental characteristics of different storage approaches with respect to the various different um, characteristics and relate these to the suitability to various cloud native use cases with a reference to the white paper. So does that sound reasonable? Is there anything there that anyone has any violent disagreements with or uh, thinks is missing? Should we uh, be, uh, sorry, I was actually gonna jump to the next one, the out of yeah. scope. Sure. Um, do we want to consider databases out of scope? Uh, I think for the white paper, we actually out of scope them for the initial um, for the initial white paper, but but in scope them in general for the storage working group. They are officially in scope for the working group definition as defined by the CNCF TOC. Okay. Sorry, not the working group, the SIG. Uh, so maybe we should actually, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of made a point of trying to keep the in-scope stuff um, short. I didn't want to go to, you know, block stores and object stores and this kind of store and key value stores, because as we go into some length to explain in the white paper, um, some of these things don't necessarily properly define something. Uh, there are interfaces, there are implementations, there are properties associated. You know, you can have a, a highly durable object store or a totally not durable object store. Um, so object store doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. Um, but for, for that reason, I didn't explicitly call out databases, um, but they are implicitly in scope. Um, okay. Is there going to be like a SIG workloads or SIG apps or something for the CNCF? Yes, absolutely. There, there is okay. such a thing. Um, I, so, so okay. At least on the Kubernetes side, traditionally, we've said, hey, databases are the responsibility of SIG apps. Um, I'm not sure if we want to make the same distinction here. If not, that's okay, but maybe it's worth being clear. And we don't have to explicitly define it as part of in scope or out of scope. I was kind of just looking at the examples that you have below. Maybe we could add a database as an example if it is within scope. Sure. Um, I've just flipped across to the actual SIG definitions here. Um, and so to answer your one question, application development operation and testing uh, is, is a SIG. And it covers everything to do with, you know, PaaS, serverless operators, uh, anything to do with application development, et cetera. Um, and has a relatively small number of projects. I imagine that will grow. Uh, and in particular, this... Uh, kind of pipelines and uh, workflows and all that kind of stuff is, is hotting up a lot. Um, storage is block file, object stores, databases, key value stores, et cetera. So that, you know, is officially delegated to us. Okay. You know, we oh, can obviously good. complain about that and we can say we don't want to <laughs> to SIG apps, but I think it fits fairly well in here. Yeah, I think conceptually it does. Uh, in terms of expertise, I think the people who tend to be experts in databases are not necessarily experts in the lower level stuff or vice versa. Um, yeah, but, and, and yeah. that's yeah, something sure. we'll need to address. You know, we need yep. to find experts and, and get them involved here. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that third tech lead, if we could find someone who's familiar with databases, that'd be awesome. That's a good idea. Awesome. Um, actually, Xiang, actually, Xiang Li, he has, well, He's the maintainer of ADCD, right? So he has expertise in that. Ah. That's true. I mean, it's not technically a database, um, but you know, we do have 
TIKV in the CNCF. Um, so that's a you know more classic distributed database in a way. Right, and also v Vitus, whereas for the MySQL. That, yeah. that might be an, that might be an idea. Maybe maybe somebody from the um, Vitus community might be interested here. Yeah, that would be great. Okie dokie. Um, so the stuff out of scope, um, I sort of somewhat jokingly said anything that's not in scope is out of scope. Um, but in particular, I think we don't really, uh, you know, go into researching non-volatile memory or any of the sort of underlying hardware devices that, that actually store the stuff. We don't spend a lot of time on that other than to the extent where it, you know, has fundamental uh, impact on some of the cloud native specific stuff. Um, I tried to make that as short and understandable as possible, and hopefully that makes sense. Um, we don't get too carried away with authentication, authorization, accounting, auditing, etc. All of these things obviously apply to storage systems, but there is another SIG um, called security that, that is fully occupied with worrying about such things. So, we so yeah. Quentin, for that first point, is it worth is it worth making it a bit more explicit and kind of saying the the, the focus is on software and services as opposed to hardware? Uh, I didn't want to go quite that far um, because I don't think that's true. I think it's perfectly reasonable to have uh, you know a honking great storage cabinet uh, or several of them in your private cloud, for example. I don't think that is out of scope, but uh, figuring out how a spinning disk works or how an SSD works is right. not we spend a lot of time doing. So, right. so that's yeah. sort of the, the distinction I had in my head. I, I don't want us to preemptively uh, exclude non software based storage solutions that can and are used in. Uh, in cloud native environments. I'm open to people objecting to that point of view, but that was my point of view when I wrote this down. No, I, well, I, I, I guess agree. that makes sense. Cool. I support that fully. And maybe we can reword uh, that slightly to make it a little clearer. Um, I, I think the, the, the distinction, so, so I was actually referring back to this statement of his where these differ from storage systems and approaches, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, hard disks, SSDs, NVMe, et cetera, they, they don't look any different in cloud data centers than they do anywhere else. So they're relatively less interesting. There are other organizations that spend a lot of time designing and figuring out how disk drives should work um, and how SSDs should work, et cetera. And that's not what we spend a lot of our time on. That, that was the point I was trying to make. Make sense? Yep, makes sense. Cool. Um, so, so, you know, the other ones are all basically areas that are already adequately covered by other groupings in the CNCF uh, family. So CNCF security is one example. Uh, CSI is another example. And storage abstractions and APIs uh, for container orchestrators um, fit within those container orchestrators. So Kubernetes or SIG obviously worries about that stuff. So we're not going to try and replace or duplicate uh, any of these existing functioning groups. Make sense? Yep. Uh, how, about, how about disaster recovery, uh, backup, backup software, that sort of thing? Where, where would that fall? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I definitely think um, data redundancy. So disaster recovery actually covers much more than storage. Uh, it's more about sort of high availability of services in general. Um, as it pertains to, you know, offsite backups and all that kind of stuff, I think that is in scope. I mean, that's, that's explicitly what things like object stores typically do is replicate their their objects to multiple physical locations, etc. So to that extent, yes, I think they are in scope. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest that um, data protection in general, you know, whether it's 
snapshots or backup software or replicas or whatever else. Those kind of all fall within, you know, typical technologies that, that are used in storage. Um, I think DR kind of gets into a bit of a gray area, especially when we're talking about cloud native, because it's, it probably has overlaps with sort of federation and multi-cloud and all of those kind of areas too. Yeah, disaster recovery normally uh, covers more than just data and storage. Um, it's usually entire, you know, replicated data centers. Um, and it's a good question. Where, do, where does that fit in the in this current SIG landscape? And, and I don't have an obvious answer to that. I mean, there is this. So we have we have a. Um, we call it core and applied architectures. Um, one of the SIGs, and that is intended to cover the container orchestrators and uh, specialized uh, instantiations of them. So things like cluster federation, uh, edge, edge, Kubernetes in edge environments, those kind of things. So it sort of fits in there. Um, and, and we could certainly talk about the, the data and storage aspects of disaster recovery in this group. Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to quiz you on it. I just was bringing it up because I know that's something that that um, would eventually come up, right? So makes uh, sense. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. And, and I we, think we, we have to cover that in the white paper. We covered that. Yeah, we did. We talked about yeah, we talked about the carbon recovery, and those are all in the white paper, so should be part of this. If yeah. there isn't anything go beyond it, then maybe another group can take a look as well. But yeah, there definitely there will be storage area. And from the software side, um, is there a distinction made uh, about how we're working with the the actual storage piece? Uh, if if we're dealing, if we're talking about software applications that that do backups and and that sort of thing, that are this this group would be covering just the the function of putting data to disk, right? That's not within our scope to deal with um, the, the... Like the application backup? Yeah, application. <laughs> yes, it's, it seems, yeah, always, uh, yeah, there's a boundary somewhere. Um, <laughs> I think it should still be responsibility of this group, um, but I maybe we can work with another group on this. Yeah, I was going to suggest a similar thing. Uh, I think there's an overlap between application development and storage there. Um, and I think we need to just sort of call it out and I can add it here to the, uh, how do I do this without messing up your comment? Uh, I think we can do that uh, here. We, we need to add a, oopsie, I'm really messing this up. Uh, I think I, watched your comment there, Xing, but we'll, we'll fix it up afterwards. Um, I think we need to add here uh, CNCF uh, apps signal, call it that. Um, uh, how applications use storage. That makes sense? Uh, I'll flesh out the details, but I think, is that what you were referring to? Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's something I think we should definitely focus on and then also should have some understanding about not getting sucked up into app dev and, and, and how these applications are going to work in terms of distributing, um, uh, managing distributed workloads and that sort of thing in terms of for how a, how a backup software would do that across um, clusters, across data centers, that sort of thing. Um, that to me seems like more of a uh, you know application specific thing, whereas the the storage piece of it, writing to disk, would be where I feel like this would be a focus for us, right? Uh, I think there is increasingly an overlap there. I mean, I think. You know, when you look at things like HDFS and Hadoop and, and Spark and many of these things, um, the the line between the storage system and the application is 
quite blurry in some cases. Um, and I don't think we need to be, we should be too prescriptive about saying, oh, that, you know, that looks too much like an application. We don't want to talk about it. My pragmatic approach is if there is already a group that is actively discussing this stuff or has a strong interest in, in taking care of it, then we should be comfortable deferring to that group. If there is no other group discussing, um, you know, how applications that, that need to do persistent state are being architectured. Um, if that's not being covered somewhere else, we need to just, you know, talk about it here until a better home emerges for it. What, what I don't want to happen is for all the SIGs to defer everything to some other non-existent SIG and then have <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. big holes in there's actually nowhere reasonable that you can have this discussion because like everybody's referring me to everybody else. That I, I mean, I, I, I think this is an area that, that actually deserves some work because we, we, we're, we're kind of moving, right? The, 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 in, in, in older environments, an application was kind of built around the storage environment. And now, just, and now what we're actually seeing is a, a more composable declarative kind of architecture where um, storage works for the application rather than the application being built around the storage. Um, and I think that particular use case is, is really, really important because more and more that's actually what's driving the, the changes to what defines cloud native storage, you know, around, you know, the composability, the API, the orchestrator integration, all of those sort of things. So, so I think that, that, that kind of is sort of important and, and it would help if, if we sort of helped to define some of that. But I fully expect that we're going to get so, some um, interesting feedback from the end users there. Yeah, I think I agree with Quentin about if there's somebody already working on it, uh, let's let them own it. Um, to that point, uh, uh, Kubernetes storage SIG and Kubernetes SIG apps have been working on coming up with kind of a holistic story for snapshotting and backing up not just volumes, but also applications. Uh, and it, it is a cross SIG collaboration. Uh, thinking about what what is it going to take not just to to make sure that my persistent storage is uh, backed up and recovered but also the entire application as a whole uh, sig apps is going to be putting out a kep soon for that so keep an eye on that if you're interested uh, but some of this is being taken like uh, being discussed in those sigs at the moment yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe this is a good uh, segue into our mission statement here. Um, and hopefully this will address some of these things. So uh, what I kind of proposed as our mission statement is to enable widespread and successful storage of persistent state in cloud native environments through the following approaches. Providing valuable and objective information to the TSC end users and projects um, regarding areas considered in scope collaborating effectively with other related groups, and that's the groups I enumerated below, and, and I'm sure there are gonna be others, and we should actually add there that this is not an exhaustive list, and helping to maintain the continued health of CNCF storage projects, and identifying and filling gaps in the landscape of CNCF storage projects. So does that, Hopefully that makes it clear that we do not plan to, you know, replace any of the existing groups. There are groups that are already dealing with some of the areas that are in scope for us and we're explicitly going to collaborate with them and not try and compete with them. Yep. Uh, no, I agree with that. I, I, I think in, in all of these sorts of things, we, we just need to keep it pragmatic and practical, right? It's it's about it's about um, moving the needle forward and not not sort of just theorizing about stuff for the sake of it. Uh, and then, oh, so, and then, yeah, 
it, unless there are more discussions about the mission and in and out of scope and the other related groups, um, I've, I've kind of stuck my feelers out and some people have thrown in that, their, uh, their hat into the ring uh, to volunteer as various roles. Um, these are the ones that I have so far. This is not intended to be an exhaustive list. And um, if anyone else is interested, please do put your hands up. Uh, ultimately, the, the TOC will decide who these people are. Um, but obviously, if we can come forward with a bunch of people that we think are well suited to the job and who are happy to serve in these roles, it makes the TOC's life a lot easier. So these are the currently uh, the people I've spoken to. So Jiang is, is officially the TOC liaison, and I've been communicating with him uh, about putting this charter together and the various leads. Uh, Alex has volunteered to be a co-chair, uh, and I would support that. I'm happy to be one as well if you want me. Uh, we need some more. Uh, tech lead Saad has volunteered. I think he would make an excellent candidate. Shing has also volunteered and Martin, an excellent candidate. Uh, and there is space for some more. So if you know anyone else, we, we mentioned tonight that... A, whoa. Somebody's rearranging their house in the background there. <laughs> um, we mentioned that it would be beneficial to have a database expert, perhaps as one of the tech leads, um, neither of which Saad or Shing, I think, call themselves database experts. Correct me if I'm wrong, either of you. Um, I've actually reached out to some of the, um, the people from Rook to find out if they're interested. Not that they're database experts, but um, they might be uh, the right kind of people. Um, and I agree we should talk to perhaps uh, TIKB and or uh, Vitesse and find out if anyone's interested there. Yeah, I can I reach out to the Kubernetes SIG apps folks as well to see if anyone there is interested. I know they've been working a lot on database operators as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that'd be useful. Cool. Yeah, I think if, if we still have, uh, if we're still yeah. looking, I, I can send a note out to my friends over at Red Hat and We've got some people on, on database here, but uh, I've got a couple of friends at Red Hat who are probably uh, uh, better uh, better suited to, to participate here. Uh, I'll see yeah. if they're interested. One, one, one thing I would caution us regarding databases, and, and, and I think the SIG in general, um, is that there are a lot of, you know, I'll call them traditional um, big iron, relational database kind of people out there um, who maybe are not familiar with uh, newer database technologies or less familiar with them. Um, and I think we need to make sure we don't end up with only uh, traditional database experts. I think we either need to have people who have a you know, broad set of uh, experience and skills with both traditional databases and the sort of more modern ones like TIKV and Spanner, et cetera. Um, or we at least need to have both groups of people represented here. Otherwise we could end up with a, a little bit of a sort of skewed perspective. It's my opinion. Yeah, that's probably fair. There was quite a lot of contention in the CNCF at the time of the tests coming in that it's basically MySQL. Uh, and people were saying, well, you know, MySQL is not cloud native and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so there's a little bit of optics here we, we need to just be aware of. We don't want a bunch of MySQL only people or Postgres people uh, to be the only people representing cloud native databases. Okay. And cool. Quentin, I mentioned in the last uh, meeting that uh, that I could. I, I'm happy to to throw my hand up as a volunteer as well, if needed. Uh, how do I get a hold of you? How do I reach out to you? 
Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I think you actually sent me an email and got buried in all my other stuff. Uh, you, you did the right thing. I just need to go and, and, and dig it out. Um, okay. I think uh, what we're probably going to have to do is, uh, I think anyone who wants to um, put their hats in the ring here should just put, you know, at the end of the day, as I said, the TOC is going to choose these people. And particularly if there's more than the number that we require, there's going to be some kind of filtering process. So I would suggest that everyone put a very brief resume together, just explaining why they think they would be suited to uh, whatever position they're volunteering to fulfill um, to, to enable the, the CNC, uh, the, sorry, the TOC to, to sort of make a, a sensible call there. Um, I would, you know, what, one thing I think that is a bit of a sore point in general across many CNCF projects and the TOC and CNCF in general is, you know, people who, people who have a history of actually delivering stuff uh, are very strongly favored. Uh, it's great to have tons of historical experience, um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the time, uh, availability or, or the inclination to, to actually deliver the stuff that needs to be delivered, uh, you're less useful than the people who actually crank out, you know, documents, code, evaluations, whatever, whatever the thing is that we're looking for. And, and this is not, you know, in any way pointing fingers at anyone in particular, but just highlight those in your, in your biography uh, to make sure that people are aware of, you know, the stuff that you've actually delivered in the recent past, particularly if it's in the context of the CNCF, that'd be great. Or, or the Linux Foundation or related areas. Okie dokie. Anything else to discuss? We've got uh, what's five minutes left. I think we covered everything that we had on the original agenda. So that's good. Awesome. Um, so is it safe to say that this charter seems to be uh, fairly well supported by this group uh, and there are no, you know, hugely contentious parts of it or anything that there are major disagreements on? Is that an accurate assessment? Yep, sounds good to me. So I can yep. go forward to the TOC and I can say we think this is a good starting point. Uh, we need to fill in some gaps at the bottom there <clears throat> and we've had another volunteer and we'll call it done. Uh, I'll send this to Xing, uh, at least Xiang uh, in the next couple of weeks. I guess it would be great if we could announce this at KubeCon to say that we actually have a storage SIG. Um, so I'll, unless anyone objects, I will see if we can get this voted on by the TOC before uh, Barcelona. That would be very cool.